three tools we'll be walking through today um, at Headset. We have Insights, which is going to be our market intelligence. This is where I'm going to go in and look at holiday sales for one day across each of our Insights premium markets. So that'll be California, Colorado, Michigan, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. Um, and then we can also look at this across all of Canada as well and see where did sales uh, increase in terms of category percentages? What brands were more heavily discounted than others? Um, apparently, I didn't uh, pause my notifications, friends. So give me one second to turn on my focus assistant. All right. Um, and we'll also be able to see um, what percent of lift each brand individually saw in their in their states or across multiple states or provinces if they do participate in uh, multi market sales in retailer we will be running through uh, the demand planning section, which is a part of the premium module Joe Cullen do you mind giving us a short overview of the premium demand planning module. Um, so the demand planning module in retailer premium is very, it's going to be pretty similar to what you'll see in insights, um, but it's really kind of focused around understanding the win behind sales, um, identifying seasonal, weekly, even hourly sales trends to help predict uh, future demand. And so um, we've got a couple period over period hourly analyses in there, as well as a holiday sales bump analysis, which is really great to used to measure um, how well your 420 sales did um, and where you saw the biggest lift, which categories, which brands. Um, so using it in tandem with insights will be, um, yeah, very relevant. It's fun. Um, I, that's, that's what I have pulled up today. So that's the only dashboard we're going to walk through today as a training experience, y'all. It's just one. Um, and for those of you who haven't, oh, it's very, very new. So for, I think, mostly Kevin um, and Cody um, on here, we have introduced a whole new marketing module for Bridge. To uh, That does include this holiday bump analysis that we have within our Insights tool and our Retailer Premium tool. So you're able to look at the same type of lift, which brand saw the largest lift over a holiday, being able to look at your inventory and see, do I have enough inventory to run a promotion at this specific store? Do I need to make some special order inventory for my promotions? Um, we also have some new added dashboards in there around understanding your customer. So who's buying? How often are they buying? Um, looking at retention rates and also breaking down uh, some RFM segmentation. So that launched the very end of March. So if you haven't, it was March, right? If you haven't heard about it, um, I know marketing sends out a couple of um, announcements about it, but Claire, Joe, um, and I, and Abby, and everybody else on this call are happy to show it off to you. Um, if you haven't seen it, we can, I can even set a breakout room for y'all if you want to just dig in right away. <laughs> As a reminder, as you're walking through Headset Insights, or if you've never used Headset Insights before, Insights is a cannabis market projection. We are looking at before consumer paid tax, after discount, top line retail sales dollars and units. And because we project everything as of yesterday, um, today we can go in and look at 420 sales. So we did a quick review of some data, and I know this isn't the prettiest slide, y'all, but um, la I looked two years ago, right? So we had uh, 2020 and 2021 were a little uh, interesting in terms of, uh, you know, COVID. Uh, so I went back an extra year and took a peek at what, what, where did we see the biggest lift in sales? Um, beverage was definitely high. This is across California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. I just want to call out that I did include Michigan in here because I clicked it on in my filters. But um, at this point in time, this was a medical only market. So just want to keep in mind that uh, Michigan's contribution to this will be fairly small, um, whereas as we get into future times or current times, it'll it'll contribute a little bit more when we're looking at combined graphs. Um, but overall, we saw fairly large lifts across um, all categories. I think flower is a little bit hard to see here, but I called out we sold uh, over 17 million in flower in 2019. And I'm not sure Oops, did I skip it? Nope, it just looks exactly the same. So when we get into 2022, so yesterday, um, I was surprised to see beverage had such a high lift compared to the overall market. And I also noted um, that we sold, it's a little over 20 million in flour across all of the markets. Um, flour prices have decreased. So this doesn't mean like unit volume of flour has gone down. Flour prices have decreased and we are seeing really high discounting in markets like Michigan. And if we remember, um, Insights is going to be showing us after discount count 
prices here. So we'll want to dive into each market and see how this breaks down um, according to each market. And I will get into the data, but I want to make sure that everybody knows our marketing department is push, pushing out quite a few different 420 tidbits that'll be a little bit more formal. They actually have our analyst eyes on them. They'll be coming out around, I heard noon today. Was that, was anybody else on stand up that caught that timing? Um, you'll see things through our Facebook, our Instagram, probably mostly Instagram and LinkedIn coming directly from us. And then we're working with a couple of news um, letter uh, groups, including MJ Biz, to be able to push out some really quick data for you today. So there will be additional analysis coming from headset marketing. Um, so you don't have to do all the work on your own because I know everyone's busy. I am going to switch us in to insights. So is there anyone on? the call who's not currently subscribed to insights kurt i think we're the only brandon. people that did, didn't say goodbye hey brandon so if you've never looked in insights before this is what she looks like it's pretty simple and it looks very similar to retailer so we have nice blue bars across the top this is that visualization i was looking at um, on that slide from 2019 um so actually going to just give it a quick uh scroll through see what segments saw the biggest lift? Some of these are usually really small. So maybe people don't go out and buy a ton of cooking oil and flour, <laughs> um, other than when it's heavily discounted. Um, it's not uncommon to see some of these really small segments see a really big lift. So this is what we looked like pre-COVID. And this is today. So what we're doing on this dashboard is we're looking back at the prior five periods. So if I'm selecting, uh, Wednesday 420, I'm comparing this against the prior five Wednesdays and looking at how big was the sales lift comparatively. You can use this dashboard for up to a seven day period. So if you wanted to come in and look at this next Thursday, you can actually pull Wednesday to Wednesday and look at that complete 420 week from yesterday all the way through the weekend into the trailing um, time frame. You can come in here and individually select your markets or multi-select them. I highly recommend uh, for my folks in Canada uh, multi-selecting all the provinces onto one dashboard and being able to look at a cohesive view um, since it'll be one of the best places to get that like total roll up of the market. We can deep dive into individual categories. I am opening this because it looks like I forgot a few and we do care about vapor pens. And I'm not going to limit this dashboard by its segment um, right now. You can do this if you're deep diving, if you're trying to understand like what is the lift in uh, cartridges, not in overall vapor pens and get a list of the top brands for cartridges specifically in the vapor pen space. Um, you can go down in the bottom and do that. Beverages above and beyond uh, the largest increase in sales. This doesn't really surprise me. Um, I've seen a slight uptick in beverages, Joe, and uh, I don't know if you have anything to add on like what you've seen in beverages recently because you're in the beverage heavy market, Joe Powden, but um, if you have any comments, definitely feel free to pop in and add them in. Um, edibles saw a good uh, lift here at 90.1%. Uh, Pre-rolls saw a 67.3% increase uh, over the past five Wednesdays, and flour always king uh, coming in at 60. 8.6. A total flower sales across all of these markets. We're not diving into a single one yet. Um, looking at about 20 million uh, total. I am going to again skip over these segment sales, but um, we are looking in U.S. markets, so I do like to just call out that a lot of these brands don't cross markets, and I would recommend if you're working within the U.S. to come in here and limit this to a single market analysis. So for our folks over at Double Delicious coming in here and just looking at Washington, um, which is where we'll go to next, um, but overall across the entire U.S. house brand, right, so our white labeled retail sales, the Kirkland Signatures uh, of the stores or the Liberty Cannabis and those Liberty stores, um, coming in at number one, seeing a 74.1% increase in sales. Um, discount rates uh, about 10% higher, um, at least 10% higher than they had been in the prior periods. Who 
who's seeing a, a raw garden has really had uh, i don't know if y'all follow raw garden um, but they've been on the struggle bus and they're definitely not seeing that percent increase in sales that we would have seen for them in prior years in california um, they were negatively impacted by vape gates um, and there was also some lawsuits about if their live resin was actually live resin so um fun fun things hey Joe, look, Redbud Roots pops up on here if you want to screenshot that for them. <laughs> and we can also break this down into individual package sizes um, and cat for categories and segments. What I would do for something like this um, is let's go into a single market. And I'm going to come in here and just reduce my filter so that it's not quite as noisy. Just going to look at edibles, which saw about a 69% increase in sales. And I'm really going to get into our gummies. And I'm also going to add in caramels, chews, and taffies as well, since there's a little bit of crossover in some of these categories. Excuse me. All right. So our 100 milligram packs did see the largest increase in Washington sales um, total for the day. Remember the insights will shift around a little bit. So you might see the dollars and cents change around here as we go and shore up our forecast at the end of the month. Um, but ending out at 37, ooh, 337. $73,000 in 100 milligram pack sales just in the state of Washington. Just looking to see if there's anything super interesting here. Other package sizes, uh, double delicious guys, what, what are some of the fun, unique package sizes that people are starting to offer in Washington here? It looks like we have 30 milligram THC packages seeing a really big lift during this holiday period as well. I'm going to shift gears because I want our retailer folks on the calls to be able to set up that holiday bump analysis that uh, Joe Powden, Joe Powden, Joe Cullen talked about um, earlier. So I'm going to stop this share. I'm actually working across multiple monitors, so I'm not going to be looking at y'all for a little bit here. We're just going to switch it over. And if you do have a retailer account, so Lizzie, even Lizzie and Wendy for you, if you have not multitasking too much. If you want to go into your retailer account, you can do that. <laughs> There's still, you would think there'd be less uh, um, <laughs> back and forth after 420, but it's still happening. Oh, it's yeah. I would expect it, Wendy, I, I really until like the end of the summer, right? Like fall after Croptober, you maybe a little break around Christmas. <laughs> oh, yep. All right, y'all. So I am in our retailer three demo account. So this data will likely look very different from yours. So this is definitely a follow along and see what happens in your own data set. Um, our demo data isn't always the best to show off all of our dashboards, but we try. And setting these dashboards up is pretty simple. So you saw in the um, holiday analysis that I just did in insights, I selected a date. Um, so I'm selecting 420 and I can come in and slice this by individual stores so I can change this filter for store name to say is and then look at a very specific store here. Um, if I had multiple stores or multiple markets, so let's say instead of just having these Emerald Valley stores, I also had, I don't know, Arizona Emerald Valley stores, very interesting combo of uh, naming conventions there, Emerald Valley, it's like a contradiction. Um, but you can come in here and you could use the contains filter to group together stores within a specific region or that have a specific naming convention. So assuming I maybe had some other stores on here, I could say, show me all of my stores that contain Emerald Valley. And this will allow you to slice a specific group of stores. And then if you're mark since you have likely I know Lizzie, at least, and Wendy, you're crossing multiple markets. You'll then be able to go and compare just that subgroup of stores to the holiday analysis within Insights for the applicable market. Um, and that'll make your analyses a little bit easier. I personally went with the show me all the data route, which is going into this filter and saying, is not blank. That's the workaround for select all. I'm currently slicing the data by brand, but you can come in here and get much more granular than you can with an insight. So you can get all the way down into individual units, products, um, and slice by brand or vendor. And you're able to limit all of those fields. So the same way that I went into the Washington edibles and limited down into our gummies, caramels, chews, and taffies, I could come in here and pull in just some of my individual 
um, categories. One thing to note is, especially if you have a lot of stores, um, this will be across all of your stores, all of the categories that are offered there. Um, so you might have a lot of options or might need to group those together as well. Um, and you can group them together let's say I saw a lot of hash or hybrid. If I wanted to see all of my hybrid cartridges or hybrid in general, I could come in here and see contains hybrid. I've already run this. I'm not going to rerun it for sake of time. It took a very long time for me to load this dashboard on my new computer. Um, but for our stores, um, and I'll let you know in a little secret, I think most of this data is coming from Washington. Um, our stores uh, or are mimicked like a Washington store saw the greatest lift in uh, hybrid RSOs. So that's a 260% increase. It's a pretty small segment um, or category, I guess is what we're calling it within these stores. Um, and then our Indica Hybrid Life Resin saw a huge lift. Let's compare flower since we can actually compare that into the actual market. Um, so flower percent increase is actually only about 9.5% here. So um, overall market across all of the markets was uh, lifted about 65%. Uh, um, so smaller lift in flower, though our sales might be higher, um, not quite as high as the overall market. Just like in Insights, we can actually come down here and start to see what brands are pushing, uh, driving most of the sales, what is the different discount rate. Um, so a little bit different than what we saw in the overall markets here. So we actually see more than a 10% uh, increase in discounting. Um, most brands growing, I'd say one of the most notable um, in terms of sales percent increase is gonna be our Northwest concentrates. One of the things I would do if I owned these stores is I would make sure that I was looking at my brands and seeing how my brands compared to the house brand sales, um, just to make sure that I'm understanding my brand's performance in my stores uh, compared to that average store in the market and that average white label product. Any questions on, on how to set this up and look at this through your own data? I'm going to move on then. Next tab over, I've switched us into our beautiful brand new module in, uh, in Bridge. So this is our post campaign module within Bridge. So in addition to that classic vendor managed inventory, which are these top sections, we've added in quite a bit of information, as I mentioned before, around customer segmentation. So understanding who are your loyal customers coming into your stores all the time versus who are the first time buyers, your must, your must keep, must not lose type customers um, and being able to look at um, who they are in terms of demographics. So are they more men, more women? Um, how old are they? Um, and what are they actually buying? We do also have a section in here for helping you pick, uh, set up your pre-campaign. So before 420, you would have wanted to go through this. You can pick a couple of A-B test stores, identify what products are moving really slowly, or even assess a special inventory order just for 420 so that you're prepared to have all of that inventory you need in your stores. And we're just gonna focus on the holiday bump analysis as our post-campaign analysis here. Same tips that I taught everybody else. Um, so I could come in here and select an individual store. I have, um, again, I'm Integrity Farms today. This is also our demo account. So if you are following along, um, follow along in your own data because Integrity Farms is not gonna be representative of probably anybody's uh, stores here. I hope nobody's living in South Park. I've gone through our date range filter on this is a little bit different. So I have um, just selected 420 to 420 um, of this year. You can come in and just select the same day twice. And I, again, haven't limited by category, brand, vendor, or units, but we can get that granular. So for Insights and Bridge subscribers or processor producers, um, you're actually able to go into your outside stores, right? So if you are vertically integrated, this would be um, not necessarily like Liberty product and Liberty stores, but if you're selling Liberty product outside um, of your stores, you can come into Bridge and be able to analyze it um, in those stores or uh, Wendy for you, same thing. We're talking about this in the future. The team hasn't, uh, hasn't bit the bullet yet. Okay. This is a re really simple dashboard, um, and so you will have these eventually. We just haven't gotten them. 
Um, really simple dashboard compared to the others. We're slicing the data by brand. Um, this is my slice by filter here. Um, so I can see that my 420 mini bars, which is a Washington based product, um, is named a couple of different things within my different retailers. So they did see a pretty good lift, except for wherever is naming them 4.20 bars. Um, these used to be my favorites. I really liked the like little toffee, milk chocolate toffee ones. I don't know why they were just so, they reminded me like a, a Heath bar. Um, we can see that that's one of the, the biggest lifts that we have. Um, we might need to export this data and combine a little bit of it because our retailers do name their data differently. For our retailers on the call, this is how um, I, I know a lot of people complain about data entry on their own point of sales, but this is how it can trickle into your vendors and the type of data that we do have to clean up for insights. Um, so we do have some articles around best practices for data entry. If you want to pass that out to any of your bud tenders or inventory managers or anybody who's entering data into your point of sale, for vendor manage or for inventory management. In our little Tegrity Farms mock world, uh, Evergreen Herbal is seeing the biggest lift. So our guys over at Double Delicious will know who they, that group is and probably some of these other brands, but in our fake ecosystem of uh, Tegrity Farms in South Park, we're seeing a 50% discount on average almost. So that's compared to 20% average discount, huge change in discounting for that group. All right, friends. So one of the things I wanted to offer at the end of this, because there's really not much more to share in terms of functionality of the tools, is just to start diving into some specific markets for insights. So is there a market that anyone wants to take a deeper dive into and understand like what was the sales lift um, in that specific market? I definitely, uh, oh, me. Someone suggested me. We like Michigan. Michigan's always interesting, but I defer to the group. Perfect. I will let me pull something up real quick. So I cannot unfortunately go into the main data because I do not have insights for Maine. Um, so let me. Oh, show Massachusetts, you. Brandon. I like Massachusetts too. If it's a democracy, I'll go. With if it's a democracy, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm good with. I'm good with Mass. Here. Massachusetts, oh look, we have three people voting. I love it. So I should have done this before I asked. Um, I actually can't go into Massachusetts yet. That is going to be our next full read market that we're launching here at Headset. So when I say full read, I mean, we can get all the way down into this brand um, and SKU level detail. So currently Massachusetts is only available in our category level read. Um, I'm hoping um, mid to late summertime to have a full Massachusetts read and we'll be able to go back through and do all of this analysis together. Right now I can just get into what was the last complete month worth of sales and then in, what is it, nine, is there, are there 21 days in this month? Nine to 10 days, we'll be able to look at um, all of April sales in Massachusetts. I can dive into Michigan, Lizzie. Um, so all of the black markets here, California, Colorado, um, Michigan, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington, we can get all the way down into these deep dives. Um, roadmap for us to be able to get you the rest of these is going to be Massachusetts and then either Arizona or Illinois. Um, we are talking about bringing on Maryland, uh, Let's see, Maryland, Missouri, New York, New Jersey. One more. I've heard uh, rumors of Manitoba. Uh, I'll leave Abby to know that people want that on my side. <laughs> so I think we need some more store coverage there. Um, but anybody want to dive into, anyone else want to dive into Mich uh, Michigan or one of the other markets that we can deep dive into? Michigan. Sorry, guys. I want to go into mass, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, Michigan's great. It's also all good. All good. Discount fun market, so it should be interesting. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we're still in. Let me get into this year. So we'll just look at Michigan. I'm gonna pull up all categories to get started. The discounting in Michigan has been painful to watch. All right, let's take a peek at what happened to Michigan. Flower, 
up 105% yesterday. Uh, so that's $5 million in flower sales uh, in Michigan. This is medical and uh, legal rec, just um, that's changes by market. So we'll call that out for y'all. Um, about the same lift in vapor pens. Edible seeing 145% lift. Um, that's pretty wild. Beverage almost 200. So total market was about 125. Um, we're seeing that actually higher in Michigan. Um, and capsules, 209%, um, very small um, do total dollars, right? I can't even really find it on the visualization here when we're looking at how, what is the actual total sales, um, but a big lift for it, um, probably likely because it's so tiny. And you said this earlier, but just to say it again, um, this is week over week or year over year? Uh, so this is comparing uh, week over, or sorry, the past four weeks to this week. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Going to get a little messy but, when we get sorry. into Sorry. Just to clarify on that, um, four weeks average or four weeks total? I believe it's the four weeks average. Let me double check my math here. I, I cheat. Um, so we have, we have text in here to help you. <laughs> oh, I it, yeah. So I just look to make sure that I'm giving you, I'm pretty, it's the average daily sales, which is what I thought. Um, so it's comparing that to the prior four weeks average um, for a Wednesday in this case. The only Wednesdays for four weeks but average. Only Wednesdays for four weeks. Yeah. So it'll look back one, two, three, four. Leave it okay. into the 23rd here. If you were to do this, so post what I recommend doing retro the holiday, and I can't select all of this on the, the calendars, you can actually come in and select a broader period. So we could look at like the weekend before 420 all the way into, oops, can't do that when you select is on the day. Um, I can go in and select a range and then it'll compare those uh, same date days of the week to the prior weeks. So if I was just like, just like the weekend before, let's do that. Let's see what's 15th. And I'm actually going to select until 421. So if you're ever selecting your date range, keep in mind that this says is in the range of 415 before 421. So that'll give me up through yesterday's data. It's just looking at Friday and the leading period. See if anyone prepped for 420 pre-holiday. You know they did. So <laughs> you're like, oh yes, yeah, they definitely did. <laughs> Not quite as much of a lift, right? So when we uh, look at the weekends overall, um, weekend sales were up um, for Michigan, um, about seven. Oh, some of these look a little low. Concentrate sales were down. What? People, everybody in concentrates waiting for better discounts on 420. <laughs> um, so concentrates, uh, sorry, down, flower up. Anything else down? That was a little shocking. Uh, tinctures and sublinguals also down, but everything else up. Um, Pre-rolls barely up over the weekend, stay pretty staying strong. Um, so that's just, I'm comparing that to what happened on the actual day. So Wednesdays are a slower day than say a Friday through um, Monday, Friday through Sunday sales. So we're usually going to see a smaller percent lift. We get the wow factor when we look at just the Wednesday. Um, that is all, not to say on 420 when it falls on a weekend, which I think is what happened in 2019, is it fell on like a Friday? Uh, 420 Friday sales are always crazy. So keeping in mind what day of the week it's falling on. want to see who's doing all right, Joe, I'm going to call out Michigan again for you. Red Bud Roots coming in at number three there, uh, seeing a total of 108% lift across their, um, mm -hmm. their sales. Uh, discount rates, though, look at this, right? So average discount in uh, Michigan, and for the guys up in Washington, um, we no longer hold the title of the most discounted cannabis market. Um, as a consumer and a shopper, I know a lot of our Washingtonians are like, Ugh. but uh, Michigan's really taken it away. So average discounts in Michigan ranging from about 11 to 20 percent, depending on the category, um, sometimes upwards of 22 percent. Um, we can see here that ProGo um, on average is discounted almost 30 percent on the regular. So their discount increased to almost uh, you know, 38% here. Um, in other markets, we don't see discounts quite this high, maybe on 420, um, but a lot of times we're looking at discounts like this, even on 420. Um, it's been really painful um, as people are kind of 
from who I talk to, everyone's saying it's really painful to fight some of this uh, race to the bottom style discounting and pricing right now. For those of you who are playing around, um, definitely keep an eye out on some of these brands that we've seen. So Juana has crossed from Colorado into multiple US markets, all the way into Canada. Um, Steezy's making a big push. Uh, if you have any presence or um, in California or you've watched the market at all, uh, they jumped to number one, pushing out Raw Gardens. We saw had taken a little bit of a dip in there in Michigan and uh, move into other places um, as well. So these are two brands that I like to make sure people keep an eye out for. For Washingtonians, Wild just entered the Washington market, um, gosh, just a couple of weeks ago here. And we're already seeing them rank very highly um in within the washington market itself but we see the same thing here in uh, michigan and keep in mind we're looking at all of these so if i was to like deep dive into edibles i'd get a little bit of a different picture any specific categories or other markets people want to poke around in it's the same for headsetters you can ask ask for things too Otherwise, what's going on more? in california yeah, that's the question that everyone asks after Michigan. <laughs> I actually looked at California this morning. So California is my home state. Um, my mom still lives there. She's in Long Beach. And I'm always like, what's going on, mom? How's the, uh, how's Haven? Because she lives next to a Haven store in downtown Long Beach. All right, so California sold uh, 6.3 million in flour um, just yesterday. Uh, just under a 30% increase, a 29.5% increase in flower sales, not quite as big as the total market where we saw that 65% um, increase, but still a good lift. Uh, doesn't look like we saw any, nothing declined. Uh, so we didn't see any declines in um, an individual category. Vapor pens really didn't see that large of a lift in sales, um, only about 22%, but we see pre-rolls. Um, if I had to venture a guess, I imagine this is a lot of infused pre-rolls, um, rose 62.5%, edibles up uh, almost 52%. Uh, concentrates, um, again, not quite as big of a lift as some of these other categories, but up almost 37%. Uh, and our beverages see an 104.1% increase. So this is consistent across every market that I've looked at. Beverage sales on 420, um, much higher than they had been for typical Wednesday sales um, over the last four weeks. When we get into brands, I've already called out uh, our friends over at Steezy. So average discount for the prior periods, about 10% for Steezy products. They jumped up to like the minimum discount in uh, <laughs> Michigan and it, uh, are discounting at about almost 15% uh, for 420 and saw a 60% increase, almost, sorry, 55.9% increase in sales. Jeter driving a lot of that sales dollar lift. Um, I imagine this is also, again, exclusively in infused pre-rolls. Um, I can click into the brand and deep dive there if we wanted to, but that's their Baby Jeter's 2.5 gram uh, multi-pack infused pre-roll, their number one seller, number one through 10 almost in the California market, really just owning that space. Um, average discount, 11%, uh, 420 discount, close to 30%, and they saw 158.5% increase in sales. Um, so huge lift in sales for uh, our friends over at Jeter for a single holiday. Um, it's pretty wild to imagine selling 1.6 or $1.3 million in sales in a single day, but they both managed to do it. Jeter uh, has fairly high daily sales in general. Let's make these more dynamic. All right, uh, so Wild, again, crossing into multiple markets. Kiva's uh, a big California brand that's starting to play around in other markets as well. I think in 2021, they announced that they were aiming to get into eight or nine markets. So another California brand to keep an eye out for. I haven't seen them actually in market everywhere, um, but I do know they were looking to enter Michigan, Illinois. Um, I think Oklahoma was one of the markets that they were looking at, Missouri. Wendy, they'll be in the, yeah, they'll be in Missouri a little bit later this year, and they just entered Mass. There we go. I've been watching watching it grow. It's like, I don't always know exactly where to find them, but I know they'll be in a new market soon. Um, same thing with Wild. Um, they've really gotten into pretty much every West Coast market. Um, they're looking at East Coast markets, and, I, and they're also in Canada as well. 
it's gonna be big brands to keep an eye out for. Oh, let's see if there's anybody fun. There's this tiny little brand that I've been watching called Malibu, um, Malibu Cannabis, and they are starting to compete with uh, the Jeters of the world, which is shocking because they started in, well, no Malibu Cannabis in our top list here. That's sad. You can use control F or uh, the find function on your computer to be able to look for specific uh, specific brands in here, which is what I did to just see if my my little buddies, I know nothing about them other than uh, they make these boogie board infused pre-rolls. They started selling them in June of last year in California and have started to be ranked in the top 10 in California infused pre-rolls, which is a huge space to own, um, you know, even one or 2% of, and I've watched them really grow. It's a brand that I would look at um, if I was starting to launch an infused pre-roll and had it been in that space. I definitely want to go look at, well, what are they doing right? Because they're doing something and they're competing with the big boys like Jeter. Quick question. Is, does Dizzy do flower in California? I believe so. Just, okay. Because it just vapes in um, Michigan. So I was, I'm very surprised to see. Yeah, I think. At the top? Uh, they wouldn't be ranked at the top in flower, but I do know that they're playing around in other categories. Usually I defer to Jim Powden, do you know off the top of your head? Yeah, you know, I don't think so. I think it's primarily just vape concentrate. Uh, but I can uh, I can do some search in the background, cash, and uh, get back to you on that. Because that's crazy if a flower, it's not, if the number one brand is not a flower brand on 420 in California. <laughs> that's wild to me. Yeah, but I guess it's also due to CZ having such dominance within the category. That's the second biggest category, right? Um, uh, yeah, I actually wouldn't be surprised because flowers so by, like is so dispersed in California, and vapes mm -hmm. is so concentrated. Yeah, yeah. the the Pareto principle plays true a, a little yeah. bit more true in categories like vapes and edibles than it does in flowers. So um, those top like three brands within um, vapor pens and edibles and even beverages own a fair, a really large percent market share. Um, even when we look at someone like Jeter, right? Um, our we don't get a, a pure flower brand until we get into brand number five here for, with CBX. Um, Jeter's almost exclusively pre-rolls, um, but they own almost 20 to 30% of the pre-roll space in California. So when we see this large 65% or 62% lift in sales, um, I know Jeter is gonna be driving a, a fairly large portion of that. CZ does sell flower. Let's see what percentage of sales it is for them. I'm on a brand details page, so you can get to this by either just looking up Steezy in the upper, the search bar over here or coming into your brand comparison page. And I just like to see where they're ranked and what percent of sales. So um, they're playing in quite a few categories in California, but it looks like they're even playing in edibles um, and a few, con or sorry, not a few concentrates, a lot of concentrates. They're ranked number three in the concentrate market. Um, dabbling in pre-rolls, I would say at this point, I am looking back at the last 365. Um, so um, they could be fairly new for them. It looks like their edibles started launching um, late last year. Um, see this dark blue line kind of pick up through over time. Let's click off vapor pen so we can actually see what's happening. <laughs> And then they just have a tiny bit of flour and pre-roll sales, more flour than pre-roll for sure. 32 SKUs, Joe, you're crushing it with the last, uh, with all the little side updates. He's just being his little expert self in insights and finding all of that. So that's where we'd like to get you if you're using insights. So Lizzie for you um, and Wendy, I'd love to be able to make sure, I know I'm training you both, um, Brandon, and the Double Delicious crew like Claire and the rest of us can help you all get connected in and, and teach you how to navigate like a pro like that with like Joe Powden. It's only been, he's been with us for eight months, guys, nine months, uh, so you can do it. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? We're just about at time. Um, we, can, we can kind of poke around again. It's this informal hangout. I don't have anything else in particular that I was trying to drive us to or, gain understanding of. It's really just to, to poke into the data and see what happened and have a little fun. This is awesome. Super Thank helpful. You, Thank you. You're welcome. I have to jump. Thank you so much. 
Thank you all. So I'll um I'll grab your email addresses from our registration and I'm going to send out those P PDFs of those dashboards that we were looking at today and in insights um, to folks, especially the folks who I know aren't subscribed to um, insights. There's a couple of couple of people on here and we'll just get y'all a little takeaway giveaway basket, one for the total market in the US, one for the total market in Canada, and then I'll um, add in Washington for Washingtonians, California, Michigan, um, and maybe a Colorado in there for y'all as well. Thank you.